This is HGT 119, Electricity 2, Motor and Controls. This week we'll be covering heating control devices. The objective of this lesson for this week is for the, the HVC to learn how to discover new things about heating controls. So this will support the HVC learner to understand the types of controls used for the HVC industry discover the operation of the types of controls used to run motors, discover the safety controls for uh, compressors and motors, understand the use of thermostats, understand the use of pressure controls, understand the use of humidistats, understand the use of airflow switches, discuss the purpose of integral controls, learn the purpose of binary controls, learn the purpose of analog controls. This introduction covers and understand how controls are used in heating systems. Controls are used in the HVC field to operate motors and other types of control devices. Therefore, it is critical for the technician to understand how these control devices are used and its purpose. Without controls, motors and other controlled devices will run all the time and to operate these vices, someone would need to turn it on and turn it off manually. However, some control devices need to operate at different speeds, volumes, humidity, temperatures, or pressure without an automatic control device. It will be impossible to, to sense the changes in these variables. In heating systems, control devices are used for safety and operation. Therefore, knowing the difference between the two and why it is used as either is important. Because heating systems can generate high temperatures and can become unsafe, safety limit controls are used to cycle off controlled devices. Operator controls are used to turn on and turn off control devices at the correct point in time. Without this automatic control device, a technician must be at hand to operate the heating system at all the times all day long. So HVAC refrigeration technicians must have an in-depth knowledge of controls and control devices to truly understand the operation and serviceability of HVAC refrigeration equipment. Some of the terms we will go over today and the learner need to research, limit controls, operator control, flame sensor, flame rectification control, airflow switch, gas valve, thermocouple, and igniter control. Operating controls are devices that control the operation of motors, pumps, fans, and other controlled devices. Again, controlled devices are anything that consumes energy such as motors, pumps, fan motors, uh, relay coils, contactor coils, and things like that. The main function is to give automatic operation to the equipment or control device like gas valves or blower motors. A heating system will have many operator controls and the more efficient the, the equipment is, the more controls the system will have to precisely control the different functions. Thermostats are control devices or switches that are controlled and operate by temperature. Anytime a device needs to turn on or off by temperature, a thermostat will be used to operate the device. Thermostats can be used for safety operation of equipment, but operating control's main function is to give normal system control automatically. Pressure control devices that senses pressure to turn on or off control devices is um, used all the time for safety controls and actually operating controls too. One type of pressure control used in the heating system is the static pressure control that senses pressure in the combustion chamber. When there's air pressure built up in the combustion chamber, the pressure 
uh, control proves there is airflow through the combustion chamber and it will allow the ignition system to operate. An air or fluid flow switch or control are used similar to pressure control for the heating system. The flow switch will sense air or fluid movement and will open or close it the contacts to control the circuit. You may find a flow switch installed in a boiler system to sense water flow through the piping to turn on other devices that must have water flow through it before it can operate. Humidistats are used to control the humidity in a room by sensing the level of the humidity and turning on and off the power to the humidifier. A humidistat works very similar to a room thermostat. Sequences are special operating controls that is found on electric furnaces to cycle the electric elements one at a time. Without this type of control, all the electric elements will come on at the same time and can have a high inrush of power. Also, by staging the elements on one at a time, the heating source can be matched to the load. This can help save energy and control the temperature of a room better. Limit and safety control. The purpose of limit and safety controls are to sense unsafe conditions and cycle off the equipment to keep the issue from getting any worse. Limit and safety controls will come in temperature controls, pressure controls, humidity controls, flow controls, level controls, and many other type of environmental sensing devices. In heating system, limit and safety controls can be found throughout the system because of the potential hazards from the heat or flames from the burners. Flame rollout controls are used to cycle off the burners when an unsafe amount of heat have built up around the burners. This control is a normally closed switch and will open when the heat around it has increased above the set point. A CAD cell is a control that will sense the flame of a oil burner and will allow the burner to operate if the flame present. If the flame goes out, the CAD cell will de-energize the control circuit and have the burners to cycle off. High limit controls are used to protect the equipment from unsafe high temperature conditions. A gas furnace may have multiple high limit controls installed in any location and matter of fact almost anything that will generate uh, high temperatures. Fan limit controls are used on heating system to cycle on the blower when the heat exchanger has reached the proper temperature but cycle off the burner when it is unsafe conditions. This control will prevent the furnace from circulating unheated air until the furnace has increased its temperature to move warm air through the building. This fan switch is basically a time delay switch. On many newer furnaces, the fan control do not sense temperature but uses a timer to turn on the burners. This timer is integrated into the circuit board. The limit safety portion of the, this control will sense the high temperature building around the heat exchanger and will cycle off the burners when an unsafe condition occurs. Pilot safety controls on a heating system are used to prove 
there is a pilot to turn on the main burners. Without a pilot safety control, the main burners can be turned on without having a pilot to prove there is a flame for ignition. This can become very hazardous because uh, an explosion could occur. Because if there's no flame to light the burners, of course there's raw gas filling up the room or building. Static pressure switches are used in heating systems for many purposes. In commercial systems, it is used to keep from having too high or too low a pressure in the ductwork. In residential systems, a static pressure switch can be used to prove there is air movement through the combustion system. A HVC technician should understand how heating systems operate to be able to troubleshoot any problem with the equipment. Without a clear understanding, a technician would be only guessing at the problem and possibly changing out the wrong components. This fact is not only important for HVAC systems, but all HVAC and refrigeration equipment the technician will come across. So the first step in understanding how to troubleshoot and how to understand operations of um, HVAC equipment and heating equipment, the first step is the sequence of operation of the heating system. Is the thermostat will um, sense the temperature in a room and it will close its contacts inside of the thermostat. So the, the contacts will close on the decrease of room temperature. The thermostat will send current to the circuit board and will energize the circuit for the draft motor. Once the motor has sensed and proved there is air movement uh, through the combustion system, the ignition control will be energized. The ignition circuit will allow a spark or a hot surface igniter, which is uh, a component that will generate very high temperature, to become energized and allow the burners to be ignited. If there's a pilot simile, the main burners will be ignited by the pilot. The main burners will remain on if the flame proving circuit senses a continual flame from the burners. If the flame is intermittent, the burners will shut down and will try to restart after predetermined time. Most newer type furnaces will at least try at least three times and after the third time it will lock itself out and will not respond and will not uh, restart itself unless the power was de-energized from the control circuit. Once a room thermostat is satisfied, or in other words, the room has reached the correct temperature, the thermostat will open up that time and it will de-energize the heating circuit. Of course, the heating system will turn off. Troubleshooting is based on knowing how the system operate and the purpose of all the controls and components in the system. Without this knowledge, the technician will be lost and will become a parts changer. So understanding the sequence of operation of a heating system is the first step in troubleshooting. Knowing how to read electrical diagrams will aid the technician to work through electrical problems. So using a voltmeter, or we call a VOM, to troubleshoot and reading a electrical diagram is a requirement of a HVC technician to become competent in his or her daily job. A VOM will be used to check for voltage, open circuits, short circuits, using both the volts and the ohm portion of the meter. 
one of the most difficult things for a HVAC and refrigeration technician to learn is how to eliminate unnecessary information and concentrating on the task at hand. Using critical thinking skills is imperative for understanding the equipment sequence, interpreting electrical diagrams, and focusing on the correct system problem is how good technicians become better. With practice and developing the skills needed can lead to growth in, as a technician and will build his career for a long-term working as a technician in the HVC field. So, replacing a defective component is the last portion of the troubleshooting process. After determining the problem, then the HVC and refrigeration technician will need to use mechanical and craftsmanship these skills to replace a defective component in the HVC system. To summarize this week's assignment, control devices are the part of an electrical system to operate when, how, where, and what will be turned on and off and by a variable signal. HVC and refrigeration systems need to, to control the temperature, pressure, flow, humidity, and level for the comfort of humans. Thereby, it will be necessary to know all possible sequence of operation of a HVC system. Controls can be binary, which is off and on, analog, which is variable, or integral, which is variable and adjusting. Controls to give the most efficient control of a HVAC system.